Hey everybody, Professor Snart just checking in here. As we look at um, getting into Unit 11, which is another modern world unit, but in this case we are challenging dominance. Although, as you saw maybe in Unit 9 and also Unit 10 on Virginia Woolf and now in Unit 11, we're really looking <clears throat> in these three units at um, certain notions of modernity or the idea of the modern period that we're part of as um, breaking from the past and challenging traditional ideas through various, um, I guess what you'd call stylistic challenges. The Wasteland is a good example of that, where it's just challenging to read on a very elemental kind of stylistic level, although content-wise that's also um, certainly a challenge to read as well, and a challenge from um, earlier notions of the the necessary unity of a, a piece of work, whether it's a, a visual artwork or um, a literary art, uh, a literary art piece of artwork. Sorry, <laughs> um, I'm trying to piece together my thoughts, and I think I have allergies going on, which is sort of out of the blue. But anyway, um, also just to direct your attentions to our due dates here. This is our last unit before Thanksgiving, so we have a bit of a break. Uh, built in, so we have Unit 11 due Thursday, November 18th, and then the Unit sort of 11 and a half, which is the a unit revision of your choice, due Thursday, December 2nd. So Thanksgiving gives us a nice little pause in there. Pardon me, coming apart at the seams here today. Um, so I just want to look into the challenging dominance Unit 11 here. And what you'll notice immediately is we have this really interesting range of readings from Egypt, India, uh, modern Europe, um, Anna Akhmatova is pretty interesting, as well as a reading from the U.S., which might be one of the first, if not the first, what you might call local readings we've really done. I haven't thought about that before. Um, but anyway, so we have this great diversity of works that we return to out of maybe that very singular focus we had in the previous unit looking at just um, Wolf's A Room of One's Own, which, now that I think about it, I should say generated some really fascinating um, discussion board posts, people coming at the various questions from lots of different angles and uh, coming up with lots of different kinds of examples from various sources, especially the whole sort of women's magazines type of thing. Um, and somebody had noted I think it might have been Robert, but if I get that wrong, I apologize. The, the idea of who's really pulling the strings at some of these magazines. So it's, you get wound up in this sort of like women writing for and about women, but are they being motivated either literally or just kind of subconsciously because they're part of the publishing culture by male editors or female editors or... I, I don't know, at some point the gender distinction becomes less interesting than what's actually being said textually, despite who is writing it, like what gender is writing it, or is um, having it written like an editor would request a certain kind of story. But anyway, um, that unit generated some really interesting discussion board posts. So if you haven't read through a number of them in um, the requirement to respond. In fact, going back and reading maybe a couple more is pretty, pretty interesting. Kind of funny, but sometimes in a legitimately funny way, and sometimes just in a sad, thought-provoking way. Really. Um, anyway, I'll let you move on to Unit 11 here, the modern world challenging dominance, and again this notion of uh, breaking from the past uh, in lots of different ways, stylistically, content-wise, uh, rearranging. Um, uh, maybe familiar or more universal ideas into new contexts, so old things becoming new. All of that continues to go on in the, uh, the units that we're working through. All right, be in touch if you have any questions, and I'll talk to everybody soon.